We are recording. Happy Monday. Oh yeah, I guess it will be by the time this comes out. It's Monday fun day. Sunday evening <laughs> for us. Um, Yet another week is going to begin. The weekend party time, fun times are over. Yeah, if, uh, this time of year is tough because there's no in the week riding and we have just lost electricity in our garage so there's going to be no in the week bike tinkering either so which Yikes. is annoying oh rama and actually i am just to specify i am kidding i'm not like horribly not looking forward to the week but just to say it's always a little bit sad when the weekend starts to dwindle and you have to shift back into other gears and also maybe i am just a bit sad about the Garage situation. Gears are the gears. There's a bike pun. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Switching gears. So we we went for a ride today on the Gord Harry Trail. And or is it Harry Gord? No, the Gord Harry Trail. We had a sprinkling of snow. It's probably a centimeter. I was gonna say maybe it was pushing two. Um, we woke up and it was quite white and lovely but yes not not very deep at all yeah i i mean being from england i said a winter wonderland but it was yeah soon melting but we uh went for a ride on the gourd harry trail and it was all snow covered and all of the trees were snow covered as well i think it was windy and cold so all the trees had snow on them so it was quite a magical view and we've mentioned the Gord Harry Trail before because of the quarry that is down towards um, Port Colburn end of that trail. Today we were thought or today we thought we should explore the trail in its entirety so that's what we did. We also found a little place uh, Station Road which is where there's a car park about halfway down maybe just over halfway down. And there's a little um, nature reserve thing that they built, which is like a one kilometre loop, which I think normally would not be worth riding around. But on a fat bike when there's snow and nobody's been on it, it was quite fun, wasn't it? Really? It was jolly good fun to do a little lap or a little loop around. And There's a tiny, well, there's some rock steps, which if you want to practice those, could be a cool place to practice those. Um and quite an interesting view. You've got wind turbines in the background and then like reeds and um, bulrushes and teasels, all with little snow hats. <laughs> so we did that little loop and then we did the rail trail in its entirety. Well, until you can't go any further and stopped at the magical Helen, Heron, Helen, magical Heron picture. Yeah, um, was it a, it was like a paddle that somebody had painted, eh? Yeah, it was a, yeah, like a canoe paddle. And I might even use that as the thumbnail. It was quite an interesting picture. Wasn't it? I think you absolutely should use it as the thumbnail. I mean, somebody put, somebody was really talented at painting and put some time and effort into that. It was beautiful. And actually not vandalised, which is quite yeah. nice. Nobody would written on it or done anything to it, which was quite pleasing. So Nice of whoever that donated such a nice piece of art. Yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a very pleasant ride. Uh, as always with rail trails, I thought it was going to be downhill on the way back, but it was uphill both ways, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> You spotted somebody up a big aerial mast, didn't you? I did. Yeah, there were two cars back, like on the rail trail at some point that we had to cruise around, which was no problem. But um, one of them was, yeah, climbing up the, is that a telephone tower? Keeps our mobile phones working, I suppose. Well, that was not a small tower, and he was more than halfway up when we were cruising by. And it was cold today as well, so I'd imagine hanging on to them metal things going up those ladders would be pretty chilly. Yeah, well, well thank goodness it wasn't too windy, or it really wasn't windy at all today. 
They did have a nice little caravan set up. Camp, no, horse box they had, which was yeah. converted with a microwave and a kettle and a chair and so. I missed they, that part. They seem to be doing okay. <laughs> You're always checking that out, though, the conversion. But I did just briefly see that they did have a nice setup in there with nice and tidy and organized <laughs> with shelves and a nice little kind of workshop. Yeah, mobile workshop, I guess. So Just what, an idea for anyone out there who's got a spare horse box kicking around. Feel Mobile. free to donate it. So <laughs> more converted. So what else did you... Uh, it was about ten, and I guess, ten and a half miles we did today in the end. Um, but it, yeah, you, it was just a bit of an experience, wasn't it, today? Yeah, I mean, it was our first ride out this season on fat bikes and you know to kick off 2024 um it was a pleasant ride to to kind of again shift gears shift bikes (laughs) uh and switch to snow it was just a nice sort of easy ride for that and it was such a beautiful day that it was even though it was you know not our not our usual bush adventure it was more of a a scenic ride would you say yeah i would and i mean i think you know fat bikes have been well you had a new frame because yours had some problems but fat bikes have not been used since last you know what february march time so you know i i mean i'd done a little bit of work on them before we moved but I mean, literally, the sealant's the same sealant, the oil's the same oil, and we just went out and rode them, and they were fine, so I was quite pleased about that. Um, And I think as we shift from bike racks, because there's now salt on the road, so the bikes go in the car, we take the wheels off, like, we... There's just a few things we need to do to become a little bit more efficient. And that was the deciding factor today, was it not? I mean, we we probably we could have ridden regular mountain bikes. Yeah. But it was the salt on the road factor and clean up and not wanting any of that to touch our precious BC clets. No, and I tried quite early on here to. Uh, go somewhere with my fat bike on the back on the bike rack and the clean up was longer than the ride like it literally took me two hours to get all the salt off of it and then even then I noticed like little pockets of it on the brake disc and so yeah it's just we just chuck it in the car instead and wreck the car (laughs) rather than the bicycles (laughs) Um, and then it's just all the other stuff like using wet oil rather than dry oil and then we have a compressor what we do when we've got electricity but we have a compressor so we can get all the water and stuff out of the headset and the bottom bracket and everything which gives us a standing chance of everything lasting a bit longer so yeah that's our cat getting upset (laughs) Seymour's permanently upset at the minute he is a little out of sorts but, no, it was a great first ride on the fat bike, and, I mean, another, especially for me and my uh, road to recovery here, sans boot, no boot, and uh, so it was a great intro of just a pretty flat, uh, but, you know, just to get the feeling of what does the fat bike feel like again, because it is much different to a regular mountain bike, it's like cartoon um, moon buggy buggy, cartoon monster truck here I come yeah and you've got a dropper place now but that requires more what's the word nuance more learning that because you can't have it all the way up you've got like a sweet spot with your leg and everything so I think I do just for the minute that I feel a bit more comfortable anyways and the dropper pace don't work properly this time of year. They take a bit of getting going because all the oil in them gets cold, particularly. It's weird because even if it's even colder, they seem to work better. It's just this damp cold. It just seems to be a bit strange. Everything struggles a bit. So. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. Maybe it's my own head. <laughs> no, you, I, I did notice today that it was a little Sticky, bit... Sticky. Yes. ...stiffer to, uh, to push my punch it for my dropper post but it wasn't an issue no and that was our second or my third ride of the weekend your second um 
because that was, you know, I guess what what I should say about the Gord Harry trail is the little loop around the quarry at the Wayne Fleet Wetlands End is probably in mountain bike terms a green with a couple of little blue features like rock steps and stuff and then if you rode along the trail to the station road car park and went and did that little loop that's probably a green and the rock steps there may be a blue I suppose and then you could ride to the end and then ride all the way back if you did the whole thing and all the loops you're probably getting on for you know like 15 16 miles so it would definitely be a fun good day out if you need something to do but also with snow on and fat bikes it's excellent but with snow on that trail generally it's fun but it it could also be a good winter ride because even though it might be muddy nobody's going to shout at you for ripping trails up it's just a you know pretty solid do you know what else I was, I would say. that I was thinking about uh, about that while we were riding today was that could be a nice weeknight, bring a light yep. um, evening in the dark cruise. No, it could, and definitely with a bit more snow I think it could be interesting. And in fact, you haven't done any night riding, that would be a good intro into that. I And I was just about to add, especially if you have not ever done a night ride, that might be a great place to start. Yeah, and if there's any, you know, big beasts hiding in those uh, little woodlands, that, well, I guess it's all uphill both ways. So I was going to say, at least you can get some speed on the flat, but, you know, <laughs> you're not going to outrun the Sasquatch that hangs out here, you know, wherever we are, Welland. <laughs> no, it would be a good intro, and actually, you know, if you're training in the garage on a static train or a midweek ride like that, would actually just liven things up a bit, I think. Yeah. Um, who knows what little friends you might see too, as you're, I mean, I, I know, highly doubt you're going to see Sasquatch on that trail, but... You never know. You never know. I, um... You come out of one of those barns. True. I've always quite liked setting off as the sun sets, so you ride and it gets dark and you put the light on for the last bit, so you don't set off in the dark necessarily, but you finish in the dark. So. Yeah, that sounds nice, like a good little You get a little bit of the transition from day to night, which is quite cool, so... So one thing that we did see uh, a number of today were horses and people yeah. riding horses. And um, I think, well, maybe not everybody knows that horses have the right of way. However, the two that were up ahead of us, we could tell that we were maybe a little bit startling one of them. Not that we were, t like, coming up that hot behind them. We're on fat bikes in the snow. Everything is much slower. Yeah. Um, but it was it was kind of nice to see, I thought, um, not just us, everybody giving them space and time. And there was even another guy coming on a bike who, um, you know, stopped and just let them approach and even pass. So. Yeah, I... I mean, the law, or the, like the legal part of it, is on a trail that's shared use, it goes pedestrian has priority, horses are after pedestrians, then mountain bikes, and that's the, like, that's the order. Um, but a horse's eyes face forwards, not backwards, so for them to look behind, they have to turn their whole body, and yeah, one of those horses was well aware of us being behind, so it kept, like, trying to look before they even realised and then they were pretty experienced I think they stopped and waited and let us go by but even a bicycle can freak out a horse like they unloaded their horses behind us and I did just say to the lady are they okay with bikes and she said yeah they're fine but I've I've even seen horses just rear up and panic just at the sight of a bicycle leaning up against a tree let alone moving so I think treating them with a bit of caution <laughs> is not always a bad thing. And even when we saw them the second time, that one was still like moving because they move around and they face their back end at you because they want to kick you. That's their defense mechanism. So just give them as much space as you can, I would say. Yeah, I did notice that when we were stood talking to them, the one was quite jumpy. I mean, even when I 
I was stood very still for a period of time, but then even just when I went to shift my feet, I could tell I kind of startled him a yeah, little bit. Yeah, a bit fidgety. Like. Yeah. There wasn't really anything edible apart from some nature's freezer, which was some apples, which she said to treat them like sorbet, but they were definitely a bit past their best. <laughs> yes. I was quite hungry on the way back, and so Jamie promised that we could stop and pick a few apples on the way back, and the first one that I had was rather mushy, like, kind of like, think of an apple that was frozen and then thawed and then partially frozen again. <laughs> About not ten, ten times. Not an A plus for texture. However, the second one that I had was was pretty darn good. But this is now where I I told Jamie, you have to trick your mind. I I just imagined that I was eating because it wasn't the same texture as a fresh apple. It was a bit on the mushy side, but the flavor was pretty good. So I told my brain that I was eating apple sorbet and. My second apple was much more delicious than my first apple. <laughs> I did wonder whether there are any maggots in there. They would just be frozen as well, right? So they would just be like a crispy, crunchy little... Bit of protein. Bit of protein. So. No, I, I could see in the flesh, though, and um, I didn't see any traveling... worms. <laughs> or any trails. No. Um, trails or tracks from any creepy critters. And then you saw some rose hips, I think. Oh yes, lots of rose hips down here in the land of roses, yeah. Rose City. Um, and I do still keep seeing this one red berry that I have not gotten to the bottom of just yet. Uh, and buckthorn, which <laughs> oh, always buckthorns. But no, the the this other red berry. It might also be in the rose family. I'm I'm still unclear if it is edible or not. Um, if it is, guess what? There is a, a lot, lot of them of it around, and not even looking too like freezery, frozeny, wimpy, sad. Like they appear to thrive in the cold. So. Yeah, I wonder though now if they are edible, whether as the cold snap comes, whether the birds will be uh, going after them a bit more, maybe. Well, I guess that's what's feeding them instead of coming to our little feeder that we put out <laughs> on the porch. And I've been waiting for the chickadees that have not visited us just yet. We need peanuts, I think. Maybe. And then once they come, they'll be. Then it'll be like. Feeding the fifty thousand, they'll tell all their friends, and then the birds. Then the birds will be gone in like you know an hour, and then we'll have to buy industrial sized packs of it to keep them going. I was just picturing letting in like a swarm of chickadees <laughs> into the house. Oh dear, with three, with four cats. <laughs> Interesting. Um, on the there's a blood bowl. <laughs> Feathers of flying. On the edible front, though, we did have a, a mini success yesterday. We went for a little hunt as we rode and revisited a spot that we had found quite a nice uh, surplus of mushrooms a couple of weeks ago. There was a few new one, a few new flushes that had come out, so uh, it was actually quite perfect. We actually got invited somewhere for dinner last <laughs> night and we had some freshly hunted, foraged, collected mushrooms that we took with us to share. Yeah, just from the uh, the Welland Canal in a little spot we know up there. So, But as it's now got colder and it looks like this kind of snow and rain is around, I wonder... We might be waiting a few weeks for some. Uh... Yeah, I don't. I haven't looked at the the weather, the long range, but it will be. I I don't figure that snow is just here to stay. No, I think it's rain and snow. I mean, we will see, but um, and we'll keep going. We'll keep doing stuff. So. Yeah, I wonder where is next. I don't know. We'll see what happens next weekend. Well, until then. Get lost. <laughs>